What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Kasim and today we are talking about the Philips Hue motion sensor. Now this is a little bit different than your typical smart home motion sensor in the sense that it's only going to be compatible if you have a Philips Hue system. Now I know a lot of you on the channel have Philips Hue products and I myself have waited this long only because you know I've spent the last couple of years just adding Philips Hue bulbs, light strips, all different kinds of products of theirs into my smart home and now I'm ready to integrate this motion sensor with all of them. Now normally I would focus on the setup of something like this but the setup to this thing is so simple that I don't need to guide you through it but what I am going to focus on is customizing the settings and then a few extra Hue Labs formulas I want to show you that I've integrated to make this little motion sensor really useful with your Philips Hue lights. So first and foremost, let's talk about the design of the actual motion sensor. It's very simple yet very functional. So right up top here on the front, this black little dot, you've got your daylight sensor. So this is going to be important if you want to have this motion sensor trigger on your lights with the amount of daylight coming into a room. So you can specify it if the daylight drops to a certain level, you can have it trigger your lights. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to do that a little bit later. Now in the center over here, you have your actual light sensor. This sensor can detect motion from all the way up to 17 feet away. So anything more than that, it's going to have trouble and you're going to need to pair this up with other motion sensors and I'm also going to show you guys how to do that. Now on the back side of this you've got a setup button so you can use a push pin or something to press this, reset the motion sensor and set it up all over again and you also get this little magnetic piece. Now what's cool about this design is one you can set this on a shelf but when you integrate this little magnetic piece and connect it like that there then what you're going to be able to do is mount this up to a wall. So you can mount it flat, but the cool thing is, is that this entire circle area is magnetic. So you can have it orientated into any direction you want. So the motion sensor can be looking down, looking to the left, looking to the right. It's a very simple design, but really useful. You also get these screws and you'll get this little wall stud. So if you want to mount it into the wall, you just got to take this screw, make a little hole in the wall, put the stud in first, get the screw through here and just screw it into the wall and then you can go ahead and mount it with the sensor itself. All right, so now that we have talked about the actual design of the device, I want to talk about placement. This is going to be really important. So what I've found guys is that if you're going to be placing it on a shelf, the best place to have it is somewhere in the middle of the room, like at eye level between you and the sensor. I think it works best in detecting motion when it's at eye level. That is if you are placing it on its side. Now, if you're going to be mounting it up to the wall, then you can place it into any corner that's going to be looking at the main motion area. So for example, if you're putting it into a room, you want to point the sensor towards the door or have it above the door. So that way it's going to pick up that motion right away and trigger your lights. Okay, so now I want to move over to my room and I want to show you guys exactly how I've got it placed and show you some settings that you can customize so you can get more use out of this tiny little sensor. So you can see that it's literally sitting right on top of the bed. And the reason I placed it there is to give you guys an idea as to what it's like if you just set this on some kind of shelf, some kind of table. But from here at eye level, like this is my eye level. And from here, it's going to have a clear field of view of the room and it's going to be able to detect motion throughout the room without any issue. Like I don't need to mount this anywhere else or place it in any kind of corner or put it up on the wall. Here is perfectly fine as an example. Now, here's the thing. If we stand still for a minute, 
it's going to literally turn off these lights. Okay, so now that the lights are off, if we move around a little bit, it's going to turn them on again. All right, so now that I've showed you guys from my room's example how the actual sensor is going to trigger your lights, I want to show you a few things inside of the Hue app settings, and then I want to show you Hue Lab formulas that you can apply to the sensor to really make it useful. So first and foremost, open up your Philips Hue app, and you're going to go into settings, and then under accessory setup, you're going to open up the sensor whose settings that you want to change. So let's go into my garage sensor. So right inside here, you're going to find the most basic settings. So you're basically going to set a day behavior for the sensor and a nighttime behavior. Now the garage is really simple, so this is great for it. You open the door of the garage anytime during day and night and the lights turn on. And then when you leave after three minutes, the lights are going to turn off. So this is very basic. So if you are going to be putting this into a bathroom where you just want the lights to go on and off, a garage, a hallway, anything like that, that's going to be great. These settings are awesome. But to take the settings to another level, we need to go into Hue Labs. Now in order to do that, you need to go back into the Explore tab of the Hue app and then go into Hue Labs. Now inside of here, if I go into my labs, you will see I have three times is a charm. So this is a custom formula that I've downloaded from the Philips Hue Labs, and I have set it up so that it has three separate times for my room sensor to trigger certain things. So you'll see that in my room during the daytime from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., if I walk into the room, it's going to set it to the bright setting. Then between 7 p.m. and 12 a.m., if I walk into the room, it's going to set the Savannah sunset theme for my room. And then during nighttime hours, anything between midnight till 11 a.m., it's going to do nothing because that time, by that time, the lights in the room are off. And the last thing I want is to move around and have the sensor triggering my lights on and off. So for me personally, this three times a charm lab formula is great. But now I wanna share with you guys a couple other ones that you can find useful for your type of scenario. Okay, so first and foremost is sensor couple. So, you know, for basic rooms like my room, the garage, a small garage where you have an open space and the sensor is going to get a clear view of the entire room, you're not gonna have any issues. But this lab formula is for rooms that have a bigger shape, or maybe a curve in the room, or maybe it's an L-shaped room, or maybe it's a three-car garage where you wanna put one sensor by the door and then the other one further down into the garage where both sensors can work together to detect motion. So that way you're not gonna have the lights turning off on you in a room just because you're away from the motion sensor. So get this formula, and with this formula, what it's going to do is that if any of the two sensors detect motion, it will trigger the lights to turn on. But it's only when both sensors no longer detect any motion that it will actually turn off your lights. So again, this is going to be useful if you have a bigger room or if you have two rooms that you want to behave in a cohesion. So you can put one sensor in one room and the other sensor in the other. And that way, as long as both sensors are picking up some kind of motion, you're not gonna have any issues with your lights just automatically turning off. Okay, so the next one I wanna talk about is sensing the weekend. This one is cool because, you know, your weekday schedule for your room or any room that you want automated is going to be different with your weekend schedule. Right now, these days, it might be the same throughout because we're all home, but generally speaking, your weekday and weekend schedules differ. So with this formula, what you guys can do is have the sensor be timed differently. So for example, if during the weekday, you wake up at 8 a.m. in the morning, the last thing you want is for it to be a Saturday morning 
and the sensor to trigger some kind of motion and turn on all the lights in a room or all over your home. So that's why this is going to be great for those people that want a separate schedule for the weekdays and a separate one for the weekend. The next formula I want you guys to check out is sunlight as a switch. This one is great for rooms that have a bunch of daylight during the day, but as the evening comes around and the sunlight is decreasing, the motion sensor with this formula can just trigger your lights to turn on when the daylight light goes down. All right, so guys, with these formulas, you're gonna be able to take the motion sensors settings to another level. The basic settings, like I said before, are great for basic rooms. For example, a garage, you go in and out, you have two time zones, it's gonna be great. You have your room, two time zones, great. Bathroom, two time zones, great. But if you really wanna tweak the settings around, these different formulas are really gonna help you get more functionality out of the motion sensor. And what's silly is that Philips Hue doesn't even mention this anywhere on the box, anywhere in the instructions. So, you know, that is just something you gotta find out on your own. So that's why I wanted to share this with you guys. So that way you can find a formula that's gonna suit your style and your needs. Overall guys, for $40, I think this is a great motion sensor, especially if you have Philips Hue lights around your home like I do. If you don't have them, you wanna go with a different motion sensor that's going to be able to work with the other smart home devices in your home. For me personally, it fits right in because I have so many Philips Hue lights now that I am going to be integrating this into different rooms and I'm gonna be adding different formulas to really take advantage of the motion sensor. So with that said, guys, I hope my insight, I hope my review can help you guys out in making a decision whether this motion sensor is going to be good for you. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions for me because I do answer them. And if you're not already, consider subscribing to my channel. Take care of yourselves and I will see you all in the next video.